And that scene where he looks into the, when he finally gets up into the, the, I don't know, is it the lamp room or something like that at the very end and it, it opens the door to him. And I guess I was afraid they were going to do this. It, it reminded me of um, the, uh, the briefcase from Pulp Fiction. Cause when they look in it, just light is coming out and they can't believe what they're seeing, but you never get to see what it is. Yeah. You can only infer from some different clues that Tarantino puts throughout the movie, but you still don't know what, what it actually is. Um, so that's kind of, that's the, that's the first thing that I thought of when they showed this, but that scene is with Pattinson was just, I didn't know he could act like <laughs> going into this movie. I didn't know what a good actor he was. Honestly, I, I, I know he was in the twilight movies and Harry Potter. That's about it. That's about all I knew about him, but I have a lot more respect for him after this. Um, but yeah, he goes through so many emotions in that, those final like 30 seconds or whatever. Like, I guess first when he reaches in, it's like ecstasy kind of, and then he starts laughing, but then the laugh turns into like, he's terrified is what it felt like. Um, I watched that a few times just to get the different emotions he goes through under that single shot, you know, and then he just, I almost thought his head was going to explode or something like scanners, you know, but uh, he just falls. And then you never, that's it. You never see what was in there, what it was doing to him. And I guess it's all for you to, to try to figure out on your own. I mean, what do you guys think happened? What do you think he was seeing, I guess? Or was, I guess he was, maybe he was feeling more. I don't know. So what I think happened is, is that he, 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 he's so preoccupied and fixated on seeing that light. What's up in that lighthouse? He gets up to the top. And what we actually see is an authentic, recreated Fresnel lens. Now the Fresnel, yeah, that's a, yeah, I read yeah. that. That's pretty awesome. And the Fresnel lens that's in that lighthouse, what it does is, is it, amp it amplifies light like like a, a thousand times. So if you take a regular like forty watt light bulb or whatever, and you stick it in that thing and light it up, it's going to show for like miles. Mm. That's that's how much it amplifies light. So the idea is, to me is, is that there's, there, there is an enchantment in the light, which is light, because light is kind of mystical, it's kind of magical, you know, it, it travels, it like, you know, however fast light travels. It, it, speed of light. <laughs> the speed of light, yeah. Yeah, it travels the speed of light. And it, it, um, it has this sort of this, uh, this quality, it's almost like it stops time and, and, and it, it's, it's kind of, everything in, in time and space and, and, you know, like God is like a giant light in the sky. There's all these sort of illusions and, um, you know, motifs and metaphors and things Fire. about light. Fire, yeah. So he gets to the light because it's like this thing of like, it's been kept from me by Willem Dafoe. Willem Dafoe has held it over his head, literally and figuratively, the entire film. So it's like, I, I finally get up here to, see, to, to get into the light. I get to to, to touch the light or see the light. And I think what happens is, is when he touches the light or gets up there, it's the, the feeling of, I finally get to, it's almost like this triumphant, I get to, I'm, 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 I'm on a higher level now. I've ascended, I'm in heaven. I'm in, you know, Elysium or my salvation or whatever it is. And he gets to that point and that's that first moment. But then he, he's so overwhelmed with the power that he starts laughing. But when you, Dave, when you say he changes to almost like horror, I think what that is, is he starts to realize that there's nothing there. And it was all a big illusion. And I think he has a moment of realization in his lucidity uh, of realizing that there wasn't, there wasn't actually anything there. It's just, it's just a lighthouse. It's just, it's nothing. We yeah. also can't forget that he's been drinking uh, I thought it was yeah. kerosene, but it's turpentine. Yeah. But, it, but that also, I think, for a moment, gives him this like almost lucid, and that's what we're seeing in that final shot. Is that that's when the blood kind of dissolves away. Yeah. What What was up with that? So, I think you have a good you have a good take on this. You don't think there was anything supernatural going on there? No, I think everything supernatural is all in the mind, and 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 but we're shown all this disorienting psychedelic stuff with these amazing shots to lead us down with where he goes. But then mm. finally in that last second, he has a moment of like, wait a minute, actually none of this is real. Like, oh shit. And then he falls. Either that could be supernatural or not, because it could just be that the light is enchanted and but it rejects him. And then he falls. Or he just fell because he lost his he's grip. He's drunk. 
he's completely smashed. Yeah. 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 He can't, so even, he can't even walk up the stairs. He had crawls up the stairs. So how do you think he gets from, do you agree with me that, that, that he just crawls out to get, or do you yeah. think something gets so out there? So he has tetanus, uh, as, as Will and Defoe was staying, stating earlier, by punching a rusted clock or whatever, he cuts his hand, he probably has tetanus. He's been drinking serpentine. He's uh, dehydrated because the water supply has been cut off. Mm -hmm. He's, um, you know, if he has malnourished, probably they haven't been eating. He's malnourished. He just fell all the way down the stairs. He's also his mental faculties are gone. So I think what happened was he just fell all the way down and his, he's barely alive and he just blacked out, crawled outside, and then the birds got him. That's what I think happened. And then, and then, and then finally he comes to right before he's about to die, which is his innards are being eaten by birds. That was that was uh that was horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> I was not expecting that. I I, I kind of thought he's gonna fall down the steps and that'll that'll be it. But they put like the cherry on top of that that last shot, you know. But what's brilliant about this movie is I could be totally wrong. I could be. It could be that there was an enchantment in life, you know. Mm -hmm. So it, that's what's brilliant about it. It works on on both levels. Well, they put that idea in your head towards the beginning of the movie when he asks. When he asks uh, Willem Dafoe about his previous assistant, and he says, "Well, he's dead. You know, he, he went insane, and uh, he thought there was an enchantment in the light." He actually says that he believed that there was some enchantment in the light. You think you're curious the whole time. It, what you know? And those bizarre shots of Willem Dafoe up there by himself without any clothes on and stuff. Like, what the hell is going on here? <laughs> and, you know, you keep seeing the mermaid and stuff like that, and so that's why. It it did feel like there's something something supernatural happening, but at the same time I can see how there wouldn't be, and it's all in his head. So the, as you said, I already said this that that's that's what's good about this movie is you can kind of take from it what you want. Yeah, and and now of course you can start to question Willem Dafoe's motives here because you said he's Proteus, and Proteus was a lesser god of Poseidon, and he would report to Poseidon about the, you know, the, the, the wrongdoings of the mortals or whatever. So you see several times, like, Willem Dafoe has tentacles, or, you know, he's got the, the horns coming out of his head or whatever, which is um, Robert Pattinson's kind of his visions that he's seeing of tyrants and, and um, you know, these mythological things. <clears throat> but um, Willem Dafoe, it could be that he's just doing all this to scare Robert Pattinson into working, doing the work that he needs to do. One day you'll get up to the light, you'll be able to see the light if you continue being a good uh, wiki. Mm. So that could be his motivation, which is, you know, uh, what do you call it? It's a, it's a good um, analogy or a good metaphor for kind of the, the current workforce of, of how bosses treat the, their uh, employees. You know, eventually you'll get up here in this office. <laughs> Carry on a stick. Yeah, basically.